everybody. Hi there. Welcome to Planet and God. We are introducing and starting our 2023 Christmas reading challenge. Yes, so we are going to be reading one chapter a day of the book of John. Monday through Friday. Yes. We're giving you the weekends off. Or the weekends to catch up. Yep. Um, and when are we starting? Uh, Dog hair, sorry. When are we starting? We are starting the Monday right after Thanksgiving. So the 27th. Yes, and then we will be finishing up Christmas Day. Yes. Yep. So chapter day, starting the 27th, you will finish Christmas Day. Yes, we're, we're looking forward to studying with you guys yep. and growing in God's Word together. Yeah, I love the Gospel of John, so I'm really excited about this one um, this year. So, and this is our third annual. Yes. So if you've been keeping up, we've done Matthew, Luke, John this year, and well, we'll wrap up next year with Mark. Yep. That's pretty great. And then we start all over. Maybe we'll flip orders. Who knows? Or maybe we'll do something different. <laughs> all right. To be determined. So, But today we're going to talk about the W's of John, which we've done the W's for all of the other um, Gospels. Yeah. So the who, what, where, when... Why, how, right? No, no, not, how. Not how, but <laughs> we know how through the spirit and power of God. That's how the gospel is written. But we're going through that systematically with the gospel of John. So without further ado, uh, let's dive in and let's introduce the gospel of John. Okay, so the first question we're going to go over is who... And that's who wrote the book. Yep. So traditionally, um, it is ascribed to John. Although the author never identifies himself, he does give us some clues. He says that he's the one whom Jesus loves. Yeah, that's what stood out to me yeah. as well. Um, he also uh, identifies himself as the one whom Jesus laid his head on at the, or he laid his head on Jesus. At, during the Last Supper, mm -hmm. um, which the other Gospels kind of clue into that's John that does that. Um, now, who is John? Uh, he was one of the apostles yep. and also related to Jesus. Exactly. I want to pull this up just so you guys can see it. You should see it now. Um, the family tree of Jesus. Um which we, have, we talked about in uh, our Revelation W's. Yes, we did a well. little bit as well. Um, I got this from Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum's Life of the Messiah study. He does a really good job at piecing this together. And um, what we see here on this, if you go down um, on Mary's side, you have Salome and Zebedee. Those two are married. Um, Salome is the sister of Mary. And Salome and Zebdi have two children that we're aware of, James and John. And so the John that writes the Gospel of John is um, the son of Zebdi and Salome. So that's just a pretty cool like family tree tie-in to um, our author. Yeah. So within the who, who was the book written to? Well, I would say all people. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is uh, no particular addressee, as in some of the books do, Ephesians, Galatians, right? Those have particular addressees. Um, I like how G. Coleman Luck points out in his um, book on the books of the Bible, uh, he says that this book, this gospel account would be written to the world, um, mostly because the word world or to the world uh, shows up 78 times in John's Gospel. So it's a worldwide book. That's a really cool fun fact. It is. <laughs> um, so next big question, when was the Gospel written? So this one is like really difficult to pinpoint, at least based on the uh, study that we've done. Yeah. Um, but it's really unknown, and then there's different thoughts on like, they didn't try to pinpoint it, but they would say, oh, it could have been um, bef uh, after the destruction of the temple. Right. Um, which would have been 70 AD. Yep. 
Yeah, that's that's what I've seen as well. You get a lot of ranges between like um, Lawrence or Richard goes from 45 to 180. Um, Edward Blum and G. Coleman Luck like 80 to 90, 95, 80. Um, I thought this was an interesting thing from Mark Strauss in his book, Four Portraits, One Jesus. Um, while he doesn't give a date in his book um, on the Gospel of John, I'm going to paraphrase. Um, he says something along the lines of few scholars um, argue for a very early date in the first century, and this is based on the evidence of the way John writes in present tense verbs. So, for example, John 5 2. Jesus mentioned, or John mentions the pool in Bethesda as it's actually there. So if it were a late date post fall of Jerusalem, why would John write it in that present tense? Right. You can go to Bethesda and see the pool instead of it was there writing it in past tense. Right, right. However, um, a lot of the Greek interpreters, he, uh, uh, Mark Strauss says this, that a lot of the Greek um, uh, scholars question that interpretation or that writing of it so we don't fully know the date of when it was written okay so that brings us to what like what is, what is the, the subject, subject of the book yeah. um Sunday school answer. Jesus. I know. That's what I got to. Obviously, it's the life of Jesus. Yeah. So. Um, what I what I noticed when I read through John, because I read through the whole whole the whole um, book first, is that um, John is going to highlight things that were not written in the other gospel accounts. So John focuses in very much on the divinity of Jesus and the human nature of Jesus, kind of showing he is that God-man person um, and the fact that he is the source of salvation for all of human, not just the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. Um, and, and you'll kind of see that as we go through in each chapter. John does something to highlight both the divine nature and the human nature of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, what were the author's goals in writing the book? Well, we kind of just talked about it, right? Yeah. To uh, give the good news of Jesus yep. and um, to show that he is fully God and also fully man. Yeah. I think I like this. In John twenty thirty one. he says this, but these are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That really sums up the goal of John's gospel. So that you would believe Jesus is the Son of God, he is God, and that by believing this, you have the opportunity to have life in his name. And um, like I said before, he records things that Matthew, Mark, and Luke leave out. Um, John focuses a lot more on Jesus' words than on his actions, which is really cool to see. Um, as we as we go through it now what else I, I also i found interesting is that john develops a couple of sub themes that i want you to notice as we read through so he develops the sub theme of the light versus the darkness there's a conflict between the two you get that right away in chapter one which we'll see uh, coming up and the fact that jesus came to reveal the father to men um, that was another key thing the last key thing uh, uh, that I got out of this was that John's gospel records three events in groups of seven. So you have the seven signs of Jesus, the seven discourses or teachings of Jesus, and the seven I am statements of Jesus. So these are just things to look out for as you're reading through John's gospel. Yeah. I noted that too in some of the studies that I was doing also. Yeah. That's cool. That is cool. Mm -hmm. So, and then the last? No, second to last. Where was the book written? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I actually, when I was doing some read-up on this book, I thought this was an interesting thing just to bring up and mention. Um, mostly because tradition, this is church tradition, puts John the Apostle in Ephesus. 
Uh, he is mentioned throughout church tradition that uh, he becomes an elder at the church of Ephesus, and it's from that church that he gets uh, uh, kicked out. Not He doesn't get kicked out of the church, but he gets sent to Pergamos. Um, exiled, that's the word I was looking for. Exiled to Pergamos from the church at Ephesus. So church tradition says essentially that John wrote this book while in Ephesus. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So now the last question. Now, why did he write why? the book? Which is another Sunday school. Well, it, that <laughs> goes back to the verse I read, tw John twenty thirty one, So that you may believe, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Yeah. Does, that's the why, why he writes the yep. book, in a nutshell. And what's interesting is that when you read through John's gospel account, he doesn't record every event. He kind of assumes that you've read or know of Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospels. And that's why when you do like a chronological study, it's never based on John. John just kind of appears every once in a while in a chronological account of the life of Jesus to fill in the gaps. Usually your chronological books are based off of Matthew or Luke because they give the best chronological view. And then John just kind of pops in every once in a while. Yeah. Um, any last encouraging words before we dig into I don't think so. Study? You don't have any? I do not. Wow. I know. I'm sorry. I'm all out of fun facts. I do. I have some encouraging words for you as you get ready to go into John's Gospel here. Um, I want you to take the time as you read through this and explore how Jesus presents himself as both divine and human. Um, he's going to say things that is supposed to inspire belief and that belief leading to eternal life back to John 20, 31. Right? That's why he writes the way that he writes. I want you to also look in John's Gospel for the faith-building conversations that Jesus has with the people around him. Think of the woman at the well, right? He has this faith-building conversation with her to bring her to that point of belief. And so look for those types of conversations, which, which is really great. Jesus um, stretches their theological view to foster faith in him and that should extend into our own lives, right? And I think in those conversations, almost place yourself in them as if Jesus were talking to you. And it's, it's a really fascinating way to look at the Gospel of John and to meditate on it. I agree. Yeah. So I think that wraps this up, right? Yeah, that wraps it up. All right, so we'll see you in the very uh, next video, which will be Chapter 1. John chapter 1 on the 27th. Yes. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.